Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming along to this really quite important event. We are going to honor a man which probably didn't get that much recognition when he was really alive. But um, I think what we're going to talk about today and, and what we're going to say today will change everybody's mind about a man called Godfrey Charles Isaacs. Now, all this research that I've done has been not single-handed. It's been helped by Tim Wander, the well-known author and historian for Marconi Company, and also recently a guy called David Prosser, who is actually a student at Bristol University. Maybe, no, sorry, a, a researcher at Bristol University. Let's get it right. He once worked for the BBC. Now, when Mr. Marconi came across Isaacs, he realized that he'd found the right man in the right place at the right time. Isaacs went on to save the Marconi company from what was going to be a pretty dismal end. One of the qualities that Marconi liked about Isaacs was his tremendous energy and business enterprise. He was taken on to run the Hall Street operation in Molson Street, and he did so well that within a few months they'd up the production and were beginning to run out of space. At the same time, he examined the company's uh, patents and found that uh, he needed to take legal action against some of the competitors to ensure a good future for the company. To address the problem of space, he then decided to purchase this land from the church, which was then a cricket ground. His vision was to produce a manufacturing city within the town of Chelmsford. And he did that incredibly. The initial, all the operations were finished in just 17 weeks. A remarkable achievement. A few years later, Isaacs was involved in the pioneering musical broadcasts by Winifred Sayer. And that later led to the famous Dame Nellie Melgaba broadcast in June 1920. One final claim of Isaacs was that in May 1922, he attended a meeting at the GPO headquarters in St Paul's in London, where they talked about the concept of the British Broadcasting Company. And it was Isaacs who came up with the idea of a public service broadcaster which did not allow advertising and which was funded by a license fee to the people that listened to it. Doesn't that sound very familiar? Yes, we can say that probably Isaacs was the father of the BBC. And yet, really, Lord Reith has some, in some ways taken some of that glory. In 1925, Isaacs died. He was a workaholic to the end, and he kept going as long as he could. After all, he was appointed the first director of the British Broadcasting Company in 1923. But what a guy, and well, we should remember him, almost a hundred years later. Thank you, Alan. Okay, Godfrey Charles Joseph Isaacs was born in London in 1866. He was the son of an international fruit merchant. He studied at both Brussels and Hanover universities and spoke several languages. Both the country and Chelmsford have much to thank Godfrey Isaacs for. It was while he was running the Marconi factory in Hall Street that the wireless apparatus which was installed on the RMS Titanic was made. Isaacs therefore played a key part in saving over 700 lives when the ship sank in the North Atlantic in April 1912. He was at the time providing employment for several local people and this was increasing as he took over more property around the factory but he had plans for big expansion. 
With the backing of Mr. Marconi, he worked on the grand plan to move the company to here, and the new street site. This became the first purpose-built uh, wireless factory in the world, and all thanks to Isaacs, but things did not stop there, as many local employees were required to work in this new factory. They needed homes to live in, and as part of his grand plan, Isaacs had built houses in Bishop and Marconi Road. In the coming years, the factory continued to expand, and more and more people moved to Chelmsford to work for the Marconi company. It became quite common at the time for whole families to be employed by the company, and today there are a large number of Chelmsford residents who had relatives or have themselves worked at Marconi's. Godfrey died in 1925, aged 58. The organisation that he built helped this country through two world wars. Today we have a legacy because one of the old Marconi companies is still very much at the front of the edge of technology and achieving great things. And this is, of course, Teledyne E2V. Their image sensors are now moving across the surface of Mars, which is absolutely amazing. This blue plaque has itself a special place in history because it is the first in Essex to be erected to recognise a past member of the Jewish community, and that's Godfrey Charles Joseph Isaacs. I think we should unveil it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Home, Godfrey Isaacs. Thank you. Thank you.